mainly just that we educate them. It's like, hey, you're you're moving here for a reason. Uh, you know, don't 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 import your you know, if you're leaving a state for economic reasons or political reasons. You know, vote don't vote the way you did there. Come come to Florida and uh, and, and understand that policies matter, uh, the positions matter, the the the, the reasons why we do things. I, I served six years in the legislature before this role. I mean, the, the policy really does matter. And, and so all those things, the, the reasons you're moving here, there's reasons behind uh, why we're the success that we are. I'm Dave Rubin and joining me today is the Secretary of State of the free state of Florida. Did you know I like Florida? Cory Bird, welcome to the Rubin Report. Oh, it's great to be with you, Dave. Thanks for having me. Secretary, I'm glad to have you. You know, I suppose this show has become kind of a beacon on the internet of the freedom that we're exporting from Florida. So I thought we could just dive into kind of all the things that we're doing right here in Florida. Will that be okay with you? That'd be perfect. I'd love to talk about all the things that we're doing in the free state of Florida. Great. So look, everybody knows, obviously, Governor DeSantis and the blueprint. We talk about it a lot here that he's trying to kind of export to some of the other states. And they, they understand what the chief executive as the governor does. Mm -hmm. But what actually, let's do a little 101. What actually does the secretary of state do? Sure. So um, I have an appointed position, which uh, is a little different. Most uh, secretaries of state are elected. Uh, Florida had an elected uh, secretary until uh, 2002. Catherine Harris of Bush v. Gore fame was our last elected. Since then, it's been an appointed position. So I'm the state's chief elections officer, the state's chief protocol officer. So I interact with foreign governments. Uh, state's chief cultural arts and cultural officer, historical officer. Uh, we have the division of library resources in the Department of State and the division of corporations. So SunBiz, you want to start a business in Florida, you come through me. So I, I wear many hats. So let's talk about the election stuff first, because when I voted just a couple months back, obviously in the, in the midterms and the gubernatorial election here, Having it been my first election in Florida, I can't tell you how thrilled I was to show my ID, to sign something, to walk over with, with a, a volunteer who clearly showed me where I was going, a piece of paper, dropping it in a box. It felt, it felt legit and real. And that was in complete stark contrast to what was going on when I was voting for several years in Los Angeles, California. Uh, what have you guys done to tighten up the uh, election situation here, and and is it basically airtight at this point? Sure. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. So uh, I'll give you a little bit of history. So I actually started as a young attorney poll watcher in 1998. I was uh, on in Palm Beach County for Bush v. Gore in 2000 and did some legal work behind the scenes. I spent 12 hours that day watching people vote and listening to people openly joke about I voted in New York, I voted in New Jersey, ha ha ha. I'm voting again here. So we've come a long way. Some when we were Florida and everybody thought we were terrible <laughs> at voting, there's really only two counties to where we are today, which is the gold standard. And that's because uh, the legislature, the last uh, two legislative sessions and under Governor DeSantis's leadership has continuously worked to improve our elections process to the point where, as you just described, it looks easy, but it's because we are doing this 24 seven, 365. We're always working on our elections. When you're talking to counterparts in other states that it's not going as well, I'm not, I, I'm not talking about crazy California, but, but even a more moderate state, someone that either is a secretary of state there or is involved in the election process, are they jealous? Are they asking you for tips? I mean, it seems like our, our, you know, we have a presidential election coming and I think we're gonna see all of the craziness or questions that we had last time. It doesn't seem like most of the states have done anything. Right. And you, and you mentioned the governor's blueprint, and we are constantly talking to other states. And I was thrilled. Uh, last week, I had a representative from Wisconsin come down on his own dime to meet with us and says, I want to take back to Wisconsin what you are doing here. You know, teach us, show us what you're doing. So uh, I, I'm always uh, preaching the gospel about what uh, what we're doing and why it works. And there's no reason why other states can't adopt uh, the Florida model. Yeah. So speaking of the Florida model, I mean, we can just go through some of the, the greatest hits here. But I, I'm curious, as you've seen uh, this mass influx of people, uh, last I checked, it was about 1,200 people a day, I think mm -hmm. almost a million people in, in three years. I've asked the governor this, but what, what challenges does that present for the state? Um, I, I, mainly just that we educate them. It's like, hey, you're, you're moving here for a reason. 
Uh, you know, don't 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 import your you know, if you're leaving a state for economic reasons or political reasons, you know, vote don't vote the way you did there. Come come to Florida and uh, and, and understand that policies matter, uh, the positions matter, the the the, the reasons why we do things. I, I served six years in the legislature before this role. I mean, the, the policy really does matter. And, and so all those things, the, the reasons you're moving here, there's reasons behind uh, why we're the success that we are. Yeah. Are you guys uh, shocked at how well it seems to be working at the moment? I mean, obviously there's a super majority in the House and, and the governor's feeling good after the landslide, but just that it really is happening here. I mean, building is happening fast. We're fixing roads. Uh, you know, the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, which w watching the rebuild has just been unbelievable. It is. It's exciting. Um, I, I'm a native Floridian, fifth generation. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, in my mind, a historic time to be living in Florida. And when I talk to um, foreign governments, I mean, if we were our own country, we'd be the 16th largest economy in the world. And foreign governments are excited to come to Florida. You know, with Miami being the gateway to Latin America, there's just so many reasons why there's energy in Florida, um, you know, from the governor on down. Uh, you know, great weather, uh, you know, great natural resources, lots of fun things to do, diverse culture, um, and uh, it's, it, it, it is an exciting time. So when you see the governor getting into it with Disney and you know, the, the nonsensical, don't, quote unquote, don't say gay, HB 1557, um, how, how does that affect what you're doing as Secretary of State? Does it affect what you're doing at all? It really doesn't uh, affect me much. I mean, uh, I you know I went from a policy making role to a policy implementing role. Uh, just la uh, yesterday, the the uh, we had, we rolled out another elections bill, which had its first hearing in the Florida Senate. Uh, so I, I am engaged on, on elections uh, law still. Uh, but as far as what the the legislature is doing, what the governor's doing, uh, it really doesn't impact us all that much. Um, but certainly supportive and, and and voted for those measures when I was in the House. Is, is anything not working here? When I had Governor DeSantis on last time, just a couple of weeks ago, I said, look, I got to ask you one tough one. And the one tough one seems to be, you know, something related to house prices just because of the influx of people. But as you're looking at it from another office altogether, what are you seeing are the, are the struggles, are the, are the issues, the stuff that you guys want to fix still? Sure. So um, I think that uh, you know, it, it's a good problem to have uh, that we have so many new people moving to Florida. Uh, but I think that balance between uh, growth and, and preserving our natural resources and making sure that we uh, are mindful of all the reasons that we want to live here from our from our beaches to our lakes and rivers to water quality. And they, that's been something that the governor has championed. And I think that's probably our biggest challenge. But I don't think it's a binary choice where you can either have you know, growth and terrible environment or, or, or a pristine environment and you know, five people live here. Uh, and I, so I think that is our challenge moving forward as a state, but we have the, the right people working on those issues and we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. I mentioned uh, Hurricane Ian earlier. Uh, as you may or may not know, my, my folks part-time are down in Sanibel Island and their place is you know, still in, in recovery at the moment. What, what's the job of the Secretary of State when, when a natural disaster like this hits and, and how much coordination do you do or try to do with the federal government? It sounds like they were kind of they were kind of good at the beginning, maybe cut and ran a little bit early, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. Well, uh, you know, th that hit right during the election cycle. And uh, so I immediately flew down or we went down there, surveyed the damage, met with the supervisors of elections. I mean, some of them, they had their own homes damaged, their staff damaged, uh, polling places destroyed. And we wanted to make sure that we could pull off an election. So I came back, reported to the governor what our findings are. He stepped in, issued an executive order we pulled off the election and the turnout in those counties was on par with everywhere else in the state. So it was it was it was so encouraging when I would when I went down there and people, even though their 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 homes had been devastated, they wanted to vote and they did. And we're very proud of that. So we, we know how to step up during a natural disaster and still preserve the republic. You know, one thing that happened or I guess didn't happen during Hurricane Ian or the aftermath was that there, there was no looting. You know, there was such an opportunity for looting and crime and, and all kinds of bad stuff. And there was none of it here. And that no. really does speak to the culture of, of people here in Florida. Well, it is. I mean, the governor, you know, we're, we're a law and order state. The law means something. And, and this goes back to, you know, the, the election code. And for so long, for whatever reason, people think, ah, it's elections. Law doesn't really matter. It's not enforced. It's a wink and a nod. It's OK if you vote twice. Nobody's going to catch you. 
governor said, no, we're creating an office of election crimes and security. We're going to enforce our election code. And I think that only does that deter the bad actors, but it gives confidence to the, the, the law abiding citizen that, that their vote's going to count. So whether it's election law, whether it's our, enforcing our criminal laws, there is a clear message in Florida that, that our laws mean something. They're going to be enforced and, and don't break them or there are going to be consequences. Uh, staying on the election thing for just a second, I know we jumped off there, but just jumping back on that a second. So in, in states that are Democrat run that clearly don't want some of these policies put in place, what, what would you say to just the Republican citizen who is there related to what they can do? I know we talked about what maybe another secretary of state that's a friendly can do. Right. Well, the, the governor has said in, in states, you have to use the laws that are in your state and, and, and fight fire with fire. So you know, we're against ballot harvesting. We've made that illegal in Florida. But if ballot harvesting is illegal in your state, then you have to use the law where you are. Because until, unless you get into the positions of power, whether it's governor or Supreme Court or legislature, you're not going to be able to effectuate the change. So I would encourage those individuals, get involved, stay involved. We look at what happened in Virginia. Virginia's a blue state. They elect Glenn Youngkin because I know many of the people who got engaged and were at the polling places. And it's it's long, it's boring work. I've done it, but it is critical, critical to to winning. And that's what I would tell them to do. Yeah, are you seeing more and more parents get involved in education down here? I mean, it seems like that really was the the instigator. I think I, I saw you speak at the at one of the Blueprint events a couple months ago. I know I did, and and it, you know that was about parents just getting on school boards, and the governor was going around the room, and he seemed to know every county, what was happening in every single election, who was getting on, who the superintendents were, et cetera. It's been great, and it's empowering parents. Uh, the, the governor appointed my wife to the state board of education, and. She she is the 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 voice of the the parents. I mean, we're 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 parents. We have a, a young family, and uh, it, it gives people encouragement that they they have a voice that they're being listened to from the governor on down to the local school boards. That uh, being a citizen, and I always preach this: being a citizen requires active engagement. It's not an activity where you sit back and wait for things to happen. You got to get your hands dirty and get involved, and uh, you have that opportunity in Florida. Are, are you guys ever worried that, you know, the more we do it right here in Florida, the more that that focus turns to us and that that could be a problem, you know, the, that the federal government basically, which is seemingly screwing up so many things that at some point it's like they keep looking to Florida going, man, they're, they're doing basically the opposite of everything we do. It's working. You know, we, we are still in the United States uh, right. and, and that that's a, an issue there. Right. Well, you know, it, we're going to have three statewide elections in 2024. Uh, my mind is already there. I'm already working on that. I know we are going to get a lot of attention in Florida for a whole host of reasons. But I always go back to it's, it's the genius of the founders that they gave us a federal system, meaning federalism, where the states can be 50 laboratories of experiment. We're, we're showing what's what's right about America. You know, I'll, I'll battle it, it, it compare us to California and New York and Illinois any day of the week. And I think it gives people in those states hope that we're not lost. We can do this if the right people and the right policies are put in place. Are you ever worried that we could tip too far red? Is there such a thing as too far red? I mean, we're, we're accomplishing an awful lot, but you know, that, that there would somehow be no balance. I'm actually just throwing it out there. I, I probably don't, sure. don't think no. so myself. <laughs> I, I think a lot of, about that, but I, I think that at some point we're gonna have to you know, let blue states be blue states and red states be red states. Um, and, and we're gonna have to be okay with that. Um, and you know, the Supreme Court said that in Dobbs. I mean, listen, abortion's not a state, a federal issue, it's a state issue, but that means states are gonna do things differently. And then people are gonna vote with their feet. You said 1,200 a day are moving to Florida. And I tell people, it's like they're voting with their, their feet. They're moving here. Um, and, and that is an expression of their, their opinion. We're gaining people. The blue states are losing people. Um, so I, I think that's an encouraging sign that we still, and that, and that keeps, that that keep that that's a pressure valve. It, it it keeps things from getting too too far too far um, into crazy land. So I think when people think of Florida, they think okay, we're we're leading. You know, obviously we led on on fighting COVID lockdowns and mandates and that that sort of insanity. I see. I think they see we're leading on education, which now seems to be exported to Iowa and Arkansas and some of these other states. W what else do you think we're leading on at the moment when the governor talks about that blueprint? Oh yeah, just on 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 um, economic policies. I mean, you know, our um, 
new business startups. I mean, we, we can hardly keep up with all of the new business startups in Florida. Um, we're, we're leading, I mean, you know, the governor just signed a constitutional carry. So we became the 26th state to do that. And my background is as a Second Amendment and firearms law attorney. That, that's what I did. So, um, you know, on, on so many issues of freedom. So whether it's elections, whether it's business startups, education, we really are. We were, we're leading on so on just about everything. Yeah, it's interesting too because you know I'm down here in Miami where obviously it's it's growing so fast and we're we're kind of running out of room here. But you know when I've flown up to to Tallahassee a couple of times, you realize there there's actually plenty of room to still build in Florida. I mean we've we've got a lot of land that I think can be, uh, you know, bring in some new people and start building some new communities. We do. So when I was in the legislature, I represented. I'm from the Jacksonville area and Nassau County, the furthest northeast part of the state. And there's lots of land and it's growing and that brings challenges. Some of the people that have been there a while, um, uh, you know, they don't always like all the new growth, but there is plenty of land, plenty, plenty of room to grow. And we just have to do it smart. You know, smart growth is, 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 is a good thing. Um, I, I gr- actually, I, I grew up in Miami, so I've seen the changes there from the 70s and 80s to today. And it's a wonderful place. But you are kind of constricted between the, the, the coast and, and uh, the Everglades. Uh, but and there's plenty of places in Florida where we have room to grow. You know, the governor has been uh, obviously talking a lot about ESG and figuring out a way that we can have some of our, the state's money less invested with these companies that are focused on diversity, equity, inclusion. Does that involve any of your day-to-day operations? It really doesn't. Uh, we're, we're ministerial when it comes to um, starting new businesses. I mean, if they file the right paperwork, uh, they do that. So the, the CFO's um, office, uh, Jimmy Patronis, the, the ESG stuff mainly comes more through the chief financial officer. Uh, but certainly, you know, whether it's uh, the legislature having the power of the purse, whether it's the universities and uh, saying, no, listen, we're spending taxpayer dollars. We call the shots. You don't make the policies or whether it's uh, ESG and corporations, uh, we do have the power of the purse and, and we're, we're exercising it. So one of the things we talk about on the show a lot is that there seems to be this, this kind of divergence amongst Republicans right now. Like either we will just be small government Republicans and never use the levers of government to do anything, or as I think we're doing it more so in Florida, we'd prefer not to use the government all the time, but we're gonna figure out the moments to do so. Do you guys talk about that? Like when we can just kind of let things be versus those moments that we actually do have to fight back? I would say, you know, going after Disney might be one of those moments. Sure, no, I mean, we, uh, the. I would always talk about the why. Why are we doing certain things? We don't legislate in a vacuum. It all starts from the foundation of the Constitution and all of our powers and authority of the government and the laws flow from that. So if we are operating within those constitutional bounds, then the government has the authority. I mean, the, the founders talked about ordered liberty. Well, order requires some some form of agreed upon standards that we're all uh, uh, that the, the, the community, a state is going to live under. And so I don't think it's, uh, you know, the, the, the small government necessarily, you know, um, you know, hard libertarian view that the government can never be involved in anything. That's just you're just ceding the ceding the power to your opponents. Are you shocked when you see some of the mainstream media reaction to what's going on in Florida? I mean, I basically, I'm covering it every day, the things they say about the governor and about Florida and what's going on here, you know, that we're this racist, homophobic, backward state. And it's like, everyone that's in this room with me right now, these are all Cali transplants. Every, you know, I spend so much time every day saying hi to people at stores who are just moving here. Everybody's happy and free and smiley. I, I go to New York, everybody looks miserable. I was in DC last week. I mean, everybody's just just had it. And here it's just, uh, it's just smiles and sunshine. It is, it's different. <laughs> and uh, it, it is amazing when I read what's in the mainstream media. I mean, I, when I read about things that, that the, the words they put in my mouth, things that I've never said, uh, they don't listen. We, we put out press releases all the time about people registering to vote and get in, you know, get engaged, make sure all of your information is up to date. And all I do is get called a, you know, a vote, voter suppressionist. And, you know, all we're trying to do is prevent certain types of people from voting. And uh, so it's a little frustrating, but it's the environment we live in. And I just always point back to, you know, if we're if we're if we're putting points on the board for the people, they will be our best messengers. And, and, and like you said, people are happy. They're smiling. The, the state is growing and uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, you mentioned the uh, concealed carry. So that just went into effect, I think, was that yesterday, literally? Or so it was last... passed, uh, the governor signed it into law on Monday. I believe it goes into effect July 1. 
July 1st, okay, so I mean, in essence, this is just permitless carry, so that, that, is that really what the fight was about, whether there should be permits or not, as opposed to the concealed carry in and of itself? Correct. So since uh, since the mid 80s, the law in Florida was that you had to have a a permit, a license from the state uh, in order to carry a concealed firearm outside of the home. And uh, you know, the decision was made. And, and I agree with it 100 percent. You shouldn't need a permission slip from the government to exercise a constitutional right. And I would always tell my colleagues, the bad guys don't follow the law anyway. Criminals, by definition, don't follow the law. So all we were doing was burdening law abiding citizens. And now we've given them that opportunity to defend themselves uh, when they're outside the home without uh, permission slip from the government. Uh, speaking of defend, defending themselves, you know, obviously having in the last two weeks this, this shooting in Tennessee, and you know, there have been over the course of years a few shootings, obviously the Orlando Pulse nightclub one and, and the Parkland outside of uh, Orlando shooting at the school there. Um, is, w what are we doing in terms of that? What, what can the state do? Is that up to the cities? Who, who decides what's, what's happening in terms of security of schools? Sure. So um, it, it, the, it, in Florida, we have a very um, robust preemption law. So all firearms regulations um, are at the state level. There's none at the local or, or at the local level. Um, so after the Parkland uh, um, shooting, uh, the state stepped up and appropriated millions of dollars for, for school security and have put in robust enhancements, um, which uh, that, that's happening at the state level. They're very aggressive to ensure that, uh, that our schools are secure. I, I, have an, I have an eight-year-old daughter. I mean, I think about this every single day. But when you live in a, in a constitutional republic, you have to balance constitutional rights um, with, with liberty and freedom and safety and security. And listen, you put everybody in prison, we can have the safest country in the world. But that's not, uh, it's not the road we're going down. And, and every one of these is tragic. But what I look at is, you know, why are they, it's not the guns. It, the guns have been prevalent in America. I mean, you used to be able to order guns through the Sears catalog. Um, well, you can't do that anymore. So there's something fundamentally wrong with our culture. And that's what we need to be focusing on and fixing and mental health. And, and we're doing all of those things in Florida. Yeah. Are, are we doing anything on the mental health side? You know, I'm always kind of like when I go to back to Cali, you know, you go to Los Angeles, every other billboard is for California mental health, this or that. And it, it always seems sort of I mean, it seems darkly humorous to me, like as if the state of California is going to be able to help anyone's mental health. But, but what do you think the role of the state is for that? Right. I mean, we should have resources available for, for people. We shouldn't stigmatize it. We should make people say, if you have are having an issue, they, they, uh, um, they, they should seek help and we should help where we need to. I mean, if people need financial resources, the state should, should step up. But I think it goes back to, too, you know, the way we raise our children. And, you know, my parents taught me at an early age, life isn't fair. Deal with it early. Um, and it, it, we're, we've, we're so protecting our children that we're in, insulating them from any type of, uh, of, of, of um, uh, misfortune when they're children. So they, they haven't learned the coping skills. And so when you become an adult and life gets really hard and you've never been told no in your life or had to deal with any adversity, I can understand why people break and and uh, but I don't know that government can can fix parenting other than emphasizing and, and fostering a, a state and an environment that uh, we emphasize the role of parenting and families and uh, their nurturing role in preparing young people to become citizens. Is there anything else we should cover here? You know, I keep saying the main thing that I think California or that Florida is exporting right now is competency, that it, it just, it feels like we have the right people in charge who are balancing that blend of when you use the government, when you don't, how you actually spend properly, where you want to apply the law, et cetera. And that's just kind of working. So did I, did I miss anything here? No, and I'm glad you raised the point of competency because I think uh, w what I see in, in DC and, there, there's a lot of people who get into politics. It's just celebrity by another means. And they think it's about uh, tweeting and getting on TV. But actually the day to day, the mundane job of actually government governing and making sure that um, our, our elections are working, that you can go file a corporation. That takes work. It takes competency. I have an amazing staff of people who come to work every single day. Uh, some of those nameless, faceless bureaucrats that we talk about. But they do a wonderful job. And it, it, that's what I would emphasize and to your point that that competency matters. And I think the governor's talked about that, that he's, he puts people in place that he can trust to go run an agency and make sure that we're delivering for the people of Florida every single day. And if we're not doing that, he's going to take us out. You know, he's going to remove us and put somebody in who can. And uh, 
I, I think that's a, a testament to his leadership. Secretary, probably not the most difficult interview you ever did, but uh, I'm just happy to amplify all the goodness out of Florida because it, it literally changed my life. So uh, appreciate yeah. your time. Like I said, I'm a huge fan and it's been an honor to be with you. Thank you, Dave. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics, instead of mindless drivel, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.